How's it going? I'm Lara. This is Tipsy. <laughs> You're doing it again, huh? I asked you guys, I asked on Instagram and I also asked on the YouTube community page. I put up polls to which video I should film next. Gave you four options. It was reading 200 pages a day for a week, reading until I find a five star, which now that I think about it is probably going to take longer than a week to film. Reading my highest or versus lowest rated book on my TBR reading series I'm in the middle of. It's kind of close on YouTube community this video one and then on my Instagram poll. If you're not already following me on Instagram go do that so you can participate. But it was tied on Instagram so I just kind of went with what was the overall rating and it was this video. <laughs> We're doing a part two to reading series that I'm in the middle of because I'm trying to get books off of my physical TBR and what do you know? I just added a few books, probably more than a few, onto my physical TBR. <laughs> in my book journal, I have a whole, <laughs> it is really windy outside. In my book journal, I have a page with my series on it I also have my notes page. This is cuter, this is more efficient, but I also have my notes pen. The series that I'm in the middle of right now, if you didn't watch my last one, definitely go watch that. I'm in the middle of Chestnut Springs. I have one more book for that. Dreamland Billionaires, also have one more book. Magnolia Parks, the next two books. I finished A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. I still have Killjoy, the novella, but I finished the trilogy. Folk Air, Once Upon a Broken Heart, have one more book. The Inheritance Games, I thought, I, I did the Inheritance Games in my last reading series I'm in the middle of. I thought the Inheritance Games series was finished, and then Brothers Hawthorne was a spin-off series. That's what I thought. But on Goodreads, Hawthorne's Brothers is a fourth book in the Inheritance Games. So, I finished the trilogy part, but then there's the next couple of books, whatever. Hunger Games have one more book. Part of Your World. Legend. Legendborn, but I want to reread Legendborn before I read Bloodmarked. The Salacious Players Club, which is a Kindle Unlimited book. Addicted to You. I have the first two Addicted books. I read the first two Addicted books. The rest are on Kindle Unlimited. We're following this. We're going to read a couple books and finish some series. I didn't technically finish any series that I was in the middle of in the last video that I filmed for this, but we're doing a part two and I'm planning on finishing at least one series, if not two, in this video. This video idea came from Just Allie on YouTube. Go watch her videos. She has a couple of episodes of this. The first book that I'm planning on reading is None Other Than Hopeless by L.P. Silver. It is the last book that I have in the Chestnut Spring series. Once I finish this, I will be finished with the Chestnut Spring series, which I'm excited to finish a series, mark off a series, but I'm so upset to be leaving this world because this is a world in my brain that is real. These people live in Canada. These people are real. They live in Chestnut Spring. I've been putting this book off because I didn't want to finish the series, but at the same time, we're here. We're ready to finish it. I've been reading this entire series on my Kindle, which is good for you if you have Kindle Unlimited but don't actually have the physical books. These, this series is on Kindle Unlimited and I wholeheartedly would recommend this series. Every single book in the series is top tier. Absolutely love. This one is about Bo. He's the last Eaton brother that we haven't gotten anything from. And Bo is kind of like a mysterious character. I'm excited to read more about him. But the thing is, last night I decided that I was going to do this video. I was looking at my polls. I was like, okay, we're going to do this video. I will start it in the morning. But I was in the mood to read a book last night. And instead of starting a different book that did, had nothing to do with this video, I was like, okay, I will start a book in this video. So I decided I was going to start Hopeless. Like I'll read a couple chapters, we'll go to bed, we'll film those when I wake up, and then we'll start reading. That was wrong. I was wrong. I lied to myself. I started this book last night, I read the first chapter, I took a tiny little break, and then I was like, okay, let's read one more chapter. I read about 10 more chapters. Then I woke up this morning, I was like, okay, this is a really good book. I'm going to keep reading. And now I'm on page 245. I couldn't stop reading. I'm really enjoying this book so far. 
I can't believe I've already read 245 pages either because it just feels like I haven't read that much. It feels like I've not sat down and actually read that much. Last night I was reading, I looked at my Kindle page and it was like, you're on page 72. Huh? Page 70. I've been reading for 10 minutes it feels like. There's no way I'm on page 70. I'm enjoying these characters so much more than I thought I would. Let me be 110% honest with you. When I was reading the other books, you know everybody's like, Bo, I need Bo. I need to see what Bo's book is. I was never fiending for Bo's book. There was never a moment where I was like, Bo, I need Bo's book right now. There's rarely any cameos of Bo. You don't get much of him. So I, it's not something that I was like, he's a mysterious man. I need to see his book. I started this book and I was like, okay, we'll just, it probably won't be my favorite or anything. But oh my goodness, am I enjoying this book. I am really enjoying Bo as a character. And then the female main character, the FMC, is such a witty, no thinking it through, says it out loud person. And I am out loud giggling. I'm gasping. I am having the time of my life right now. This book, I can't seem to put it down. I love Elsie Sylvia's writing. I love every single character. The only thing that I think I want from this book not this book. The only thing I think I want from this series is to also have like a novella of Harvey. I just want to see Harvey and his life. I wish there was one more book, even just like a small little crumb of a novella of Harvey. I would appreciate, but it's okay. I'm enjoying this book. I'm really liking this book. It's the last book in the series and we're going to finish this today. And then we're just going to hop into another book. And it's, what time is it? It is almost one o'clock and I have plans to sit down and read for the rest of the day. For the rest of the day. I do have other stuff to do, but I might just ignore all of my responsibilities and read. If you haven't already started Chestnut Springs and you love a small town romance, pick it up. Please pick it up. It's on Kindle Unlimited. It is such a good series. Let's go read. spot it is 751 I'm on chapter 36 I have like an hour and a half left or something I'm gonna sit and finish this book though I just finished Hopeless like a couple minutes ago and upon finishing it I'm feeling a little emotional if I'm being honest. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit emotional for finishing this series because I just feel like I've grown so attached to these characters. These characters feel very real to me. They feel not like fictional characters. They feel real. And it makes me just a tad bit emotional that I finished it. I, there's still like bonus scenes that I can look up, but I finished the series and I'm a little sad about it. I'm a little sad about it. I will go into further detail tomorrow morning when the lighting is better. And then we'll talk about my next book. But for now, I'll talk to you tomorrow about the book and then we'll pick my next book. Good morning. <laughs> It is the next day. It is 9.18 in the morning. We can finally sit down and talk about Hopeless. I had the night to sit on it. I enjoyed this book. Not as much as I've enjoyed the other books, but I did enjoy this book. It's fake dating, small town. It's another Eaton brother, which I love the Eaton family. 
I told you that I wasn't super excited for Bo's book, but I did enjoy Bo's book. I will say this book is probably the spiciest of all the books. The entire Chestnut Springs series has spice in it, if you didn't know. The entire Chestnut Springs has spice in it, but I think they all vary. This one was indeed a lot of spice. Felt like such a quick read, even though it was 500 pages. I sat down yesterday and read 400 of those pages and I I don't even know how, but it just felt like there was no way that I read 400 pages. Sometimes it dragged out a little bit. This was a good book to start the video with and I have completely finished the series. It was bittersweet, honestly, quite bittersweet. With that being said, oh, I gave it a 4.25 star. It was between a four and a 4.25. I think I landed on a 4.25 because I did really enjoy the FMC in it, she was so just, there were points in there where I was just laughing out loud, but it was because of her. Like she was the main character in this book. I'm so sorry, Bo, but she was the main character in this book and I absolutely loved her. We can mark off Hopeless officially and completely mark off a whole entire series. So I read another book in my 2024, my 24, 2024, and just, I quite honestly think like, I am an artist, obviously. I am obviously the biggest artist you'll ever meet. I'm just kidding. I am just kidding. Don't take me serious. I drew a little mirror. Now for our next book that we're picking, I'm kind of excited for it. The next book we're reading is A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. A Curse for True Love, which is the third book, and a Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy, which is also the last book in the series. And I told myself once I finished this, even though Caraval is technically first, you read Caraval first. I said, once I finish this, I can finally go into Caraval. Which just means we're gonna start another series. <laughs> Two villains, one girl, and a deadly battle for a happily ever after. I'm so excited to read this book. If you have not read the series, um, Once Upon a Broken Heart is the first book in the series. That one is about Evangeline who believes in happily ever after. She just thinks that she will find her one. And the person who she thinks is the one is going to marry somebody else and not her. So she makes a deal with the wicked king of hearts and she realizes I probably shouldn't have made that deal with him because he's just a little bit tricky. Is she gonna find true love or is it gonna end in this devastating tragedy? That is kind of what Once Upon a Broken Heart is about. It's this fairy tale world, the Magnificent North. I think that's enough talking, I think. We should just go and start a curse for true love because I am so excited. <laughs> chapter and this book picks up right where you left off. I'm having a hard time kind of remembering exactly what happened but I'm sure it'll come to me but it picks up right where it left off and so far I I really like the writing of Stephanie Garber. <laughs>
January 19th at 3.03 p.m. You didn't necessarily need to know all that information. But I told you anyways. Give you a little quick update on A Curse for True Love. Right now I'm on page 128. I am actually in the middle of a chapter. How gross. Everything that's happening right now is very specific to what happened in the second book. At the end of the second book. It is very specific to what happened in that book. Obviously, because this is a book in a series. But I feel like sometimes you can say a little couple of things here and there. But really, I can't. <laughs> I can't. I'm having fun though. I also just... I got who I wanted to come into this shot. I, I'm a little baffled by stuff that's happening in this book. I was recording myself earlier when I was reading. I turned off the camera and 10 minutes later, I should have turned back the camera on. I, sh I wish I had the camera on because what was happening, my jaw was literally on the floor. Because you're kidding. You're, you're kidding. <laughs> We, as a whole group of readers, don't like you. Because today, I would like to get to page 200, chapter 26. And that means I would be a little over halfway. The way that she writes is so... This book talks a lot about fairy tales, or this series specifically talks a lot about fairy tales. And I feel like the way that it's writing is very, like, whimsical, if that makes any sense. Very lyrical sometimes. And this is exactly what it feels like. That's what the writing feels like. <laughs> if you watched my last video, if you watched my last reading vlog, my romance reading vlog, I asked about a book club, if anybody was interested in a book club. I had a couple people say yes, and then I posted a poll if anybody was interested, and I've only gotten yeses. I've only gotten yeses. So, it just seems like the overall vote for a book club is yes. So I think we are gonna start one. I, I'm not sure exactly what app I want to use. I'm thinking of Fable. If you have an app suggestion for a book club, let me know. But I'm thinking is Fable is what we're going to go with because it's just a free app. But I'm also thinking our first book is going to be in April. So we have March to decide on a name. We have March to decide on what book we're going to read. And then we're officially going to start in April. That's what I'm thinking. That's what I'm thinking. Some names coming together. I'm going to post another poll. It'll probably be up by the time this video is up. I'm just going to let the poll run for um, however long I decide. I don't know. With name suggestions that I have. And then whatever you guys pick is what the name is going to be. If you go to my YouTube page and click on community, it shows all of my polls on there or anything on there. If you click on that, there's going to be a poll. Hopefully it's up by now. There's a poll with name suggestions. A couple of names over there. Pick which one you like and then we'll go with that for our book club. But I'm really excited about that. We'll talk more about it later on. Thanks for saying you're interested because now we're starting a book club. Yay! We'll talk more about it later. But right now, we're going to continue reading A Curse for True Love.
Hello. I don't know the last time I updated you. It's been a couple of days. I also got a new bookshelf. I'm here to update you. I'm here to give you your finest update. So for starters, we talk about A Curse for True Love. I finished this. When did I finish this? What's today anyway? Today's Thursday. So I finished this. Tuesday. This is the third book in a Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. This one still follows Evangeline on what happened in The Ballad of Never After. Something happens at the end of Ballad of Never After and that's what you're following the entire book. There were crazy points. I was shocked. I loved it. I don't know how I feel about the ending. I don't know because it gives me vibes of like another book but a spinoff maybe. I don't know. I don't know, but the way it finished made me feel like maybe there's something coming. It finished off good, but at the same time, it didn't finish off good. <sighs> I cannot talk about this book whatsoever. I cannot tell you literally anything in this book because then it spoils a ballad of never after for you. But I absolutely recommend this series. I gave this, let's look, in my book journal. I believe I gave it a 4.25. I gave this book a 4.25 star because I think my favorite is Ballad of Never After. I will say after reading all three of these books and then I'm going to start reading Caraval soon, I think I'm going to reread these books after I finish Caraval to really get the like center of the story because I feel like I missed out on a couple of things in here that maybe I didn't get because it, maybe it's in Caraval. I really want to just pick up everything that happened in these books and although I know the key moments, I want to see kind of in between the lines. But I did finish A Curse for True Love. That means I also finished the Once Upon a Broken Heart trilogy. We have finished two series in this video. Because we finished Hopeless, which is the last book in the Chestnut Spring series, and now we're checking off a Curse for True Love, which is the last book in Once Upon a Broken Heart. I also, I have been waiting to fill it out. I'll fill it out when I read my last book. I cannot wait to fill my series tracker out and color in my squares to show that I finished series. I definitely recommend this series to literally anybody. The next book that I picked up, you already saw, but it's Final Offer by Lauren Asher. This is also the last book in the Dreamland Billionaire series. Again, another series that we can just officially check off the list. I'm doing so great in this video. I am doing so amazing in this video because in my last video, I didn't single, I, I didn't finish a single series. I have been putting this book off for so long because what business does a romance book having a, what business does a romance have, okay, okay. What business does a romance book have being almost 600 pages long? almost 600 pages. I'm literally, I'm 200 pages into this book. I still have almost 400 pages to go. 400, what is gonna happen in 400 pages? That being said, I am liking this book. I've, I've been excited for Cal's book. If you don't know, the Dreamland Billionaire series it starts with the fine print, then terms and condition, and then final offer, and then there's a spinoff series, which is Love Redesign and Love Rewritten, I think. This series is about three brothers who have three things to fulfill in a will to get their inheritance. Basically, their grandpa leaves them each something that they need to do in his will and that if they don't complete that by this time or whatever, they don't get their inheritance. In the first book, you get a lot about Dreamland, which is their grandfather's legacy, kind of, and it's it's basically a theme park, cute little theme park. And then Terms and Conditions is a marriage of convenience. This one is about Cal and Alana. He's a lot different than his brothers. His brothers are these businessmen and I'm straightforward and don't beat around the bush and I'm grumpy. But Cal is a happy-go-lucky golden retriever, but behind closed doors, he's very different. He's a high-functioning alcoholic, disappointment. His task at his inheritance is to go back to Lake Wisteria, which is somewhere he used to go in the summer with his grandpa, to sell his grandpa's house. He has to stay at the Summer Lake house for a summer and then he has to sell it. But the surprise is Alana, which is someone whose heart was broken by Cal, also lives in that house. This series is also on Kindle Unlimited, so I am reading it on my Kindle just because I don't want to hold this book. I'm gonna go read though. Melanie Slay. Melanie Slay. I will not get any reading done 
if Melanie Martinez is on the radio. On the radio, radio. I can listen to you all day. Time to read because I will listen to music all day. Yeah, yeah. She's done. We're done. three books that I finished in this video, which was Hopeless, Final Offer, and A Curse for True Love. I finished three series in this video. How exciting is that? My last finishing series I'm in the middle of, I didn't finish a single one technically. I thought I did, but I technically didn't. But today I finished three. Let's kind of go over my books really quickly, check off my series. Um, do you see me in this all the time now? Yes, it's my favorite one. So... As you saw, I just finished Final Offer. Well, I finished it last night right before I went to sleep. I finished Final Offer. I still don't really know the rating on this book. This book is about Cal and Alana. You're learning more about Cal. In the other books, fine print and terms and condition, you get a little glimpses of Cal here and there, especially in the second book because of Iris. But you see him as this happy-go-lucky golden retriever, no issues. He's nothing like his brothers. Rowan and Declan are these businessmen. They are running Dreamland and different parts of Dreamland. But he doesn't care. He wants nothing to do with certain things. He's But you don't really know much about Cal. Although I was excited for Cal's book. From the other books, I was excited to get Cal, especially because like I said, you see him a lot more in the second book because him and Iris are best friends. You're following him and his story in the third book. You're following him, see what he needs to do to get his inheritance from his grandpa, what he needs to complete in the will. But you're also following Alana. Him and Alana have a past together. In order for Cal to get to his inheritance, he needs to go stay at his old Lake Wisteria Lake house. It's where he used to stay in the summer. It's where he met Lana. But he has to stay there for a full summer and then sell it at the end of the summer. The thing is, Alana lives there, but she also says that she owns this house. So he runs through these issues. You're following him, figure out how to do all of these things. You're also watching him and his addiction. He has an alcoholic addiction. It talks a lot about his addiction. That's what you're following a lot through this book is his addiction and how it affects him and how it affects his relationships, how it affects the way he grew up and all of that. Thinking about it, there was something that was kind of brought up in this book. Something to do with Alana. It was brought up and I feel like it never, it never finished off. I don't know. I say that, but at the same time, the spinoff series where Love Redesigned is, it's still set in Lake Wisteria, even though it doesn't follow the same three characters because you're following the three male main characters in here. Even though you're not following them, you're still following people in Lake Wisteria. So I'm wondering if what happens that kind of unanswered kind of goes with that book, if you're going to see it. I just realized my glare on my glasses is probably... That little thing kind of happens. It never gets brought up again, which I think 
it should have. I feel like that could have been a big part of Alana's story and I kind of wish it was touched on a little bit more than it was, but it wasn't. Listen, I know I complained about how long this, this book was. It didn't necessarily feel that long on my Kindle. I feel like there was a lot to talk about so I couldn't understand why it was 600 pages. It probably could have been a little bit, it wasn't 600, it was 580 pages, so let me calm down. I still really did enjoy this book. I was really excited for Cal's book. I don't know who I liked better, Declan's book or Cal's book. They were both really good. I think I ultimately am probably gonna go with like a four star on this one, 4.25. I really don't think there was anything about this book I didn't like. Let's check it off though of our notes list. I know I checked it off on my series tracker, but let's go ahead and check it off on this other list I have. Final offer, finished three series. Wow, that's so, so exciting. This has been sitting on my shelf for quite a while. I am glad I read it. I did really like their story. I also realized while I was editing this video, I never really told you what Hopeless was about. So let's talk about Hopeless really quickly while we're recapping the rest of her books that we've read. In this. Hopeless by Elsie Sober is the last and final book in the Chestnut Spring series. This one is about Bo. He is a mysterious man. Bo was in the military. That's something different than the rest of the brothers. And then you have Cade, who just works on the ranch. You have Jasper, which he's not related to them, but he's actually Bo's best friend and they grew up together. Jasper was kind of adopted by the family when he was a teenager, so he's a still an Eaton boy. Jasper is actually a hockey player, professional hockey player. Then you have Reckless, which follows Theo. He is also a bull rider, but he is not a part of the family. He's just a prodigy. Just he's just a prodigy of Rhett. You're still following him. And then Hopeless, obviously, which is Bo. He's in the military. He has this very secretive job that he doesn't talk about. He's going through. All the things that come with his job mentally and all of that, you're following him just going through something that happens. Who is just this town hero. Everybody loves Bo. He doesn't like this though. He doesn't like people checking on him. He doesn't like how his family is just so on top of how he's feeling. So he strikes up a deal with this girl who's also struggling in this town because people, she's getting that opposite effect that Bo gets. He strikes up this little deal that let's get engaged. So you can kind of feel what I feel. Maybe people will start to like you if they know that you're getting married to me. If you have the potential of having my last name, maybe people will treat you differently. Fake dating, small town romance, family. It's not like found family, obviously, because it is, it's a real family, the Eaton family, but you have this like tight knit, close family that you're following. He's so protective of her, even though they're not really together. It's super sweet to watch. I did really enjoy this book. So that's hopeless. And then we also finished A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber in this story. Again, third book. Can't really tell you much about it because this one is solely based on what happens at the end of Ballad Never After. If you are going to read this series though, although I didn't read Carvel first, I kind of recommend you reading Carvel first. You don't have to. You do not have to read Carvel first, I promise, because like I said, I read this first. You don't have to read Carvel first, but I kind of recommend you to, to kind of get into the world, to get into the writing that she has, because her writing is very different. I also would say if you're going to read this series, probably read this book not long after you read Ballad of Never After, because it's so detailed at what happens that you need to really follow what's happening. There's a lot of ups and downs, a lot of twists and turns, a lot of you know, there's, it was a really fun book. I really did enjoy this book. I really like Stephanie Garber's writing. Fully recommend this series. I actually recommend every single one of these books, every single one of these series. They were all super fun to read. That was a part two to reading series I'm in the middle of. I will keep doing this because it's super fun and y'all seem to enjoy it. Y'all pick this, so I hope you enjoy it. If you hear Tipsy snoring, I'm so sorry. She's sleeping. Again, this is from Just Allie. I'll link her, one of her series that she's in the middle of down below in the description, as well as all of my other social medias. If you wanna join in on any of my polls that I do on Instagram, I have one coming out that some of you might've voted for. I had fun filming this video. I read some books that I've been putting off, honestly. I put off all three of these books, either for this video or because I wasn't ready to finish it. And I'm happy I finished all three of them. Well, that's all I have for you. If you want to maybe subscribe and join this side of the internet, that would be really cool, but I'm not gonna force you to do anything, but that would be really cool. Other than that, I hopefully will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching.